A lot of times when my clients ask me to do a product rendering for them, they say, hey, do something that looks like Apple. It has to look like Apple, something cool, looking like Apple. <laughs> and I always ask myself, what is it? What does look like Apple? And you know, I think I found out a secret since I'm working with clients for years now that are always asking me to create beautiful 3D product rendering for them. And I think one of the main secrets about this is the subject of lighting. Lighting is extremely important. I will now do this toaster video here. You can see the toaster that I render it and that I modeled in this video. I will show you how the process was and how it comes to life. And when I come to the point where I have to re uh, light this thing up, then I will show you the light maps that I use. It is a product that I developed on my own in a photo studio in Berlin. And I offer it for sale. If you are interested in these beautiful and high quality light maps, you can have them if you want. Um, you can check out the link in the description. So let's get the video rolling and yeah, I will talk a little bit about the subject. Yeah, so I don't know how you feel when you think about 3D product rendering. Um, for me it is so that sometimes I think a lot of the material I find online is somehow lacking a certain degree of realism and beauty and there are like two worlds there's this one world of very high-end product visualization that like for example apple use um, and there's the other side where you have just a product visualization and somehow it looks odd and this is not because the model is not right or the the material is not right it just looks not not beautiful not like dynamic there's not there's no dramatic light in it and i think this is actually the secret. Um, if you have a very beautiful light setup and if you use light sources that are like very natural in their appearance, then you will have beautiful reflections in your products. And if you just use a blank area light, for example, you will never achieve a realistic lighting and a beautiful product rendering. It is simply not possible because 3D is only a simulation of reality. And if you compare this to reality and if you would try to find a light source in reality that is like a rectangle, 100% flat, and you would throw it onto an object, of course it would not look beautiful because every single light source has a certain degree of fall off or a certain degree of like a hot spot in the middle and it goes towards the edges as it becomes a little bit darker. And that is very natural, that is very common and yeah, realistic. And if you think about product photography, I think a product photographer, I mean like a professional product photographer, would never use a rectangular area light. I mean, not in his worst nightmares. <laughs> it would be definitely not that thing that he's after. He wants to have a very beautiful dynamic reflection in his products. For example, if he, have a, if he has a glossy product, like a metallic product or something like that, he will try to have a, a gradient, like having a hot spot on the left side, for example, and then it gradiates toward the right side um, and it becomes darker. And so he has a very nice dynamic in the light and in the product. And so I think this is what we as 3D artists should be after. And the thing is, like, I have this feeling that when I watch those, um, you know, 3D product renderings online, I see them and I think sometimes that they are just look very flat and boring. And I think this has, this has something to do with 3D artists having not a real artistic mindset when it comes to lighting. Like, it is almost as if they are running out of time in the end, they just try to whip up some lights quickly because the deadline draws nearer and they have to just finish the project. So then they push the render button and it looks like, like crap, sorry. But that's very often the case. And I'm guilty of this too, because in the beginning I didn't know how to handle this subject. But as someone who has a photographic background and as a retoucher, I attended a lot of photo shoots and I always had some time to ask the photographer about his light setups. And so I did. And um, he shared his knowledge and the secrets with me. And I asked him, what is this big diffuser over there doing? What is this big light source over there doing? Why, why is this interacting? How, how is this, um, like this glow in the bottle? How is this possible to create something like that? And he 
or they, who are, uh, were multiple photographers, they um, in general were very talkative about their secrets and they shared them with me. And I ended up using this knowledge that I gathered over the years, uh, product photography, and I applied this to 3D. And I can tell you the results were just mind blowing. So, all right. Um, let me now talk about the lighting in this particular project. All right, now we are into the process of lighting. And this is the folder of the advanced light maps. And I will choose at first a gradient. I choose the first light map, an elegant gradient. And what I use is the images as planes import because it makes it quite easy to import any kind of image and then I pull it out a little bit, scale it up, make it big. And you see I use the constraint damped track um, because the damped track um, yeah, makes it possible to have a, a light source that is facing towards the object uh, no matter where I move it. And this very, comes in very handy. I always use this for my product visualizations. And what I now do is I create a, create a shader in the right way. Um, you actually only have to apply the the light texture into the emission and then you crank up the emission strength in order to make it shine. And what I also do is I create an alpha mask so the blacks of this light will be um, not visible. So because if I do that I can stack up a little bit more lights, you know, like behind each other. So I think it's the right word. Anyway, so now you see it looks already like something, right? Look, do you see this? This is exactly what I was talking about. You have a very nice hotspot on one side and it radiates over to the other side, but it, you know, it has a fall off. It, it gets darker. It is not like completely flat. And yeah, this is one of the secrets that uh, Apple, for example, uses when they do their product renderings. Um, that there is dynamic, there's some degree of yeah, the life is like vivid, like really, um, like really beautiful. Um, I don't have really like a, a concept. It is more like I try to create something that looks artistic, that looks beautiful. It is not really like that I say you always have to have a like a three point setup or so. I very rarely use those um because i you know i just try to light up or illuminate the areas that are not looking that beautiful and i try to create rim lights i try to create like you know just fit the shape of the product also a little bit like emphasizing that there is like a bulge or you know like a bow or whatever and yeah this is what i try to achieve here you see that i i also modified the plane a little bit the light so I made it a little bit like wrapping around the toaster because if I don't do that I have to scale it up even more to have this reflection also at the bottom and at the top. Yeah so I duplicated it and to the other side I want to have a little like a little stripe I think. I don't know. What am I doing there? What's going on? No, this is not what I'm after. No, no, no. What is he doing? Ah, he's want to have a new light. Of course. Advanced light maps. And he is... Ah, yes. Beautiful. Dedicate light. A spot. It's all about gradients in the end. So, ah, our point light. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful damp track, as always. Very important. Very nice thing. <laughs> hmm? I, think, I think I'm going to do a challenge in the future. Like something like light up a product in three minutes or so. I think that must be possible with the setup and with these light maps. So, all right, um, I deactivated the ray visibility to the camera because the light source is now white in front of the camera. So if I would not deactivate that, 
everything would be white. And it's also very handy to have one preview viewport where you look through the camera and on the other side an EV viewport where you can just try to organize your lights. Comes in very handy. So I think, hey, this looks good. Yeah, it starts to look like something. As I said, there is a light on the one side, then there's a little bit of darkness, then there's a light on the other side. But everything is blending into each other. Nice. Yeah. All right, I think you are getting the point. Again, if you are interested in these light maps, please check out the link on Gumroad. You can have them. Um, I think they are quite inexpensive um, for what you get. Uh, you can create really like very high-end renderings with those. And that is why, yeah, feel free to check it out. It would be a pleasure for me if you decided to purchase them. Also a great support for me as an artist and for my family. Thank you in advance for that. I think I will do more videos about that, about these light setups and create very beautiful things like also a bottle. I'm planning to do an online course as well. And yeah, I now will fast forward the video and you can see the light process. And yeah. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel and please like the video it would help me so much and we will see each other next time thank you very much bye bye